So the ratings start around 12 minutes into the video. If you want to skip ahead, uh, maybe a little after 12. Obviously, everything's my opinion, and for the French, I'm ah. Uh, again, my opinion only. There is a link down below for a fast forwarding utility. Uh, all kinds of keyboards shut. Please don't leave negative comments. Thanks. Okay, so we're covering. This is the CPU support on Zen 1, which is Zen. Zen Plus was a 2500-2600X, 3750H, and those um, APUs. Zen 2 is current, 3600, 3700X, 3800X, 3900X, 4750G etc current zen 3 is about to be released this is august 2020 so we don't have in technically any cpus or apus which is a cpu with a graphics processor um released right now now this is why the cpu support becomes important look at what the b550 supports it only supports Ryzen 3000 and 4000 processors. Ryzen 4000 hasn't been released yet. Um, so, X570 supports Gen 1, Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, which is current and upcoming Zen 3 for the X570. One of the main reasons to buy X570 and it's PCIe 4 Express all across the board. Let's look at the CPU support from the manufacturer. All right, this is a new night, new video. Hopefully, y'all um, caught all that. Basically, X570 supports Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, Zen 3, which equals Ryzen 1000, Ryzen 2000, Ryzen 3000. And Zen 3 equals Ryzen 4000, which are not released yet, even though the mobile chips. Um, they st got a 4 at the start of them, some of them, but they're not even released yet, and they're really Zen 2 chips, like that 4750G you see there. We're going to look at three different motherboards to try to explain this. This is the cheapest motherboard in the list. Um, all right, that's all the CPUs it supports. Notice all of them right through here. Except for this 4750G, 4650G, and there should be a 43 50G. These are not even re released to the uh, public yet. They're only released to OEMs, those three mobile processors from Ryzen 3000, which equals this is all Zen 2. And I know it's confusing. I hate this naming stuff. But only Ryzen 3000, that's all the processors B550 supports. Now let's look at the Tomahawk. This is the complete list of CPUs for the Tomahawk 550, MAG 550 Tomahawk. It's also all 3000 except for these mobile ones at the bottom that aren't released to the public yet, only to OEMs. Um, with in, the APUs with integrated graphics, that's part of the reason you get in the B550s because they have the graphics ports on the back. These aren't released, so you cannot buy an APU right now except kind of on the shady markets that works on these B550 an APU that works on these B550s yet in contrast X570 supports Ryzen 1000, 2000, 3000 and the upcoming 4000 and you can see you got a lot more CPUs to choose from including this is the main reason for X570, choosing X570, I would think. Uh, let's look, find some, here's some GEs. This is not supported. These are released and you can buy them. These are not supported on these 3200s right here. Not supported on B550. You have to get the 4750H, 4350H. But you see also down here you can get some, uh, where is it, the cheaper 2400s, even the Zen, Zen Plus. These are Zen Plus, I believe. Um, 
So you got four choices there, or actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That will support there. Or it also, just like the B550, these ones that aren't released to the public yet, bottom three. So that's the big difference. X570 Tomahawk versus B550 Tomahawk. All right, here's part of the confusion right here. We're going to look at the three wikis on Zen, Zen Plus, and Zen 2, which is current. Uh, so Zen is well, coming down to the processor list here. We know these Zen 1s right here, Ryzen 1000 series, are not supported. However, AMD mixed in their 2000 and even 3000 um, see all these 20 these ones right here these will all be supported on the X570 2200 GE's 2200 G's 2400 G's you can pick them up very cheap these will not work on the B550 so you can see these lists these are different variations so you just have to check uh, previously when I was looking at what motherboards were supported so this is the Zen Plus list right here. X570 supports all of these, uh, pretty much, except the thread rippers are not supported. They're part of Zen Plus, but the rest of these Ryzen chips, 3400s, GEs, but the, you'll see that the desktops are the 2500x, 2600s, 2700s, and these mobile GPUs right here. X570 supports, the B550 does not. The only ones that the B550 supports are on the Zen 2 and the upcoming. Hopefully they don't name it Zen 2 Plus, they name it Zen 3 when they release it in a month or two. So you see a 3500, 3600, uh, 3700X, 3800X, 3900X, and the Threadbird is not supported. Um, that's a different chipset. But the only, it only supports three of these, the B550s, three of these APUs, the ones with the graphics, and they're not even released to the public, only to OEMs at this point. So this one, I think it's this 4650G and the 4350G. Those are the only desktop APUs with the graphics included that the B550 supports, so you can't even buy one yet to use the display port or the HDMI on the back. Soon though, in a month or two, you'll be able to buy them. Okay, so this is confusing even to the guys that make the charts for AMD. Technically, the X570 supports all the way back to the uh, 1000 series of the Ryzen processors, Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, and Zen 3. This graph is from AMD is a little bit confusing, but the X570 supports a lot of those Ryzen 2000. They're in the list of supported processors on the X570. Uh, close this out. And the reason we're emphasizing this is I've already gotten a bunch of questions just from the previous video. Uh, it doesn't thought it supported all these chips. No, it only supports these Ryzen 3000s, like the 3600, 3700X, 3900X, and a few others that was, we just saw. Or this is the current video. I'm trying to get... Okay, here's the two I wanted to show right here. And you can see the chart back here. We're getting to that in just a second. Okay, the differences between X570 and B550. CPU to PCIe is 4.0. The chipset is only 3.0 on a B550. However, the first NVMe and the first uh, GPU 16X graphics slot is 4.0 on the B550 because they both go to the CPU. And even the Gigabyte B550 Master worked around that and they cut half the lanes off the first 60 made it an 8x on the first gpu slot and gave the other eight by four lanes to either nvmes or another gpu by eight they got some witchcraft there and some 
chicanery. I don't even know the right words. They're non-standard to get by B550 Master. Good board. Great board. You just got to know what you're doing with it and change your PCI lanes on it. Another big difference to me, and it's a very important one to me, is this USB 3.1 Gen 2. Uh, the 10 gigabits per second speed. And I used to have, let me pull it up here, Let's disconnect this, hopefully it don't destroy everything. This is a Juice Systems USB hub, 3.2 Gen 2. Um, it says 10G on there, which is the Gen 2. That's what you want. These good cables, Gen 2 cables. Don't buy any crappy old regular USB-C cables. Get these Gen 2 cables. Look at the braiding on that. And so that's why it's important. You got eight support for eight. So eight ports. That's Gen 2. Big difference. Um, as the two support for two full ports of Gen 2 on the B550. That's very important to me. Um, I try to buy only Gen 2 now. There's so many dang different cables that don't work with each other. Between Gen 1 and Gen 2, you end up... One cable will work, and I even made a video on that. Um, so you can see the difference in the PCI GPU config. The B550 is technically the same, except... Everything outside that first slot is PCI 3. They don't really, you see that X4 there, don't really explain that. And the X550 got a chipset fan. The PCI 4 NVMe drives, M.2 drives, are at least 10 degrees C hotter. That's the main reason for that chipset fan. They run a lot hotter. A lot faster and a lot hotter. Okay, we're going to try to race through this as fast as we can. Um, starting with the price. And the price rating is determined. They get 0.5 bucks for every 10 bucks higher or lower than 165. I set the baseline at the Aces Tough Gaming X570 Plus. And we'll go ahead and set that one to white color. Um, 165 so if we sort all this um, by price USD let's try this again um, let's go largest to smallest okay I got it duplicated All right, so we can see the highest motherboard is expensive is the Eorus Master X570. And the next one is the ASRock B550 Taiichi at $299, followed by the Asus B550E Strix Gaming. They're all three great motherboards, including the one under the B550 Eorus Master. And we'll find out where they, you can see how I'm deducting price depending on how much they cost right there so let's go to the next thing uh, we're gonna do three columns at once this time we've already talked a lot about CPU support so it's, I'm not gonna dwell on this a lot I'll go ahead and sort it first by CPU support and you can see the X570s get a full point. The rest of them only get a half point because they only support Ryzen 3000. Sorted again on the PCI 4. Um, they all get a pass on this one since the fir first GPU slot and the first NVMe all support PCI 4. I didn't differentiate the other ones. Um, next one is memory support. Again, they all get a pass and a one on this one. Uh, pretty much all of them are going up to 5100 uh, megahertz on Ryzen 4000, which hasn't released yet, uh, in overclocking mode. They all got good memory support. Uh, let's leave it at that. You can go look at each 
Over at the far right, you see all the manufacturer side links where you can look at all the specifications, pictures, whatever you want to disagree with me. Again, treat, please try not to leave negative comments. This is just my opinion as I put it at the front of the video. Now the next one is where we really start to see some differences. Um, sorted again by VRM. Okay, here's your best boards right here. And we've got some B550s in there with the X570s. The SRock Taiichi was expensive. Uh, B550 E Strix Asus Gigabyte. Um, lowest cost one in there is the Asus B550 F Strix Gaming. Um, moving on. I guess I should probably maybe talk to why these ones got a one. They have a better VRM. And then the zeros are just average, nothing spectacular. Um, they'll pretty much handle up to a 3950X without overclocking. Now the CPU VRM power is where I start to differentiate where the problems are on um, these motherboards. Let's get it sorted. Okay, my, my good ones are at top. Then I got average ones that probably have extra four pin connectors. Um, if they don't, they're really good boards anyway. They don't have any issues with uh, overheating or getting up to 100C on your overclocks. Now starting at the MSI B550 Mag Tomahawk. Really popular board. It got a zero strictly because it's got a good VRM, but it got a zero because it draws the most power of any of the tests I've seen. Almost getting close to 400 watts, 386 I think. Uh, so I, I deducted a point. It uses the most power out of any of these motherboards or without overclocking with overclocking it, it just pulls the most power uh, when it com it runs comparably to these ones but it pulls almost 100 watts more power so I deduct it now we start getting into the ones that are starting to overheat the further down the list goes the hotter they get but they work and then I I'd really have to consider these minus twos because they there was one or two of them that throttled they got super hot 110 115 C which is starting to get pretty toasty enough to start a fire <laughs> so consider that um, I'll leave it there go look them up watch some other videos my opinion only all right Wi-Fi some of these boards have the latest Wi-Fi on them and oops control Z I don't want to sort on Wi-Fi you had a quick peek um, all right so everything with the two has Wi-Fi 6 at 02.11 AX a couple of these boards have 802.11 AC which is Wi-Fi 5 uh, which is what I have this Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus and the rest of them no Wi-Fi uh, BIOS flashback button on the back plate or Q flash on back plate um, is what this rating is so let's see which ones have it and which ones don't Um, so all these ones have it one or the other either a button or some something on the back to flash back the BIOS and these ones just left it off altogether there is recovery methods but not used here on these ones are zero the USB 3.2 uh, is one of my important things I would definitely get the better rated ones this is one of the things I've had issues with on uh, video 
and USB 3.2 hubs and cables and stuff not working or dropping the connection I always get a Gen 2 device now no doubts about it don't buy anything less than 3.1 or 3.2 Gen 2 it has to be Gen 2 for me um, so let's unhide these So they pretty much all got a pass. Um, these ones at the bottom, they either have very limited 3.2 Gen 2, but they might have one or maybe two only. Um, that's sorted by overall USB. They're all getting better about having them. Now, on the USB overall, the ones with lower rating, they have a lot more USB Gen 2, excuse me, USB 2 not Gen 2 ports than they do USB 3.1 or 3.2 ports. The ones at the top you can pretty much be assured you're going to get some good Gen 2 support in there. Um, let's go on to the HDMI. Now this is one of the places up where it was surprising that the B550 had good support on over the X570 even because it had good and bad there's two things about this first off there's no APUs that can use this shit that you can buy uh, 4750G only OEM um, you saw earlier CPU support only only had three that that B550 support. However, when they are released for Ryzen 4000, everything with a one here has the latest two or 2.1. Most of them are 2.1 HDMI, um, which will go up to 4K 60 or even a little, maybe even a little bit higher. Um, and the one. With a minus one, they got HDMI 1.4B, which means they can only do 4K 24 frames per second or 4K uh, like 30 hertz or something like that. Which all your 4K monitors, just about any monitors, the last 10 years are running at least 60 hertz in the USA. So these ones, if you're planning on using an APU, you don't want one of these boards. Um, I want to say about this Biostar Racing, I haven't been able to find a price on it, so this is estimated price and price rating on this Biostar. Um, but I put it in because I wanted to see what it was compared to these other ones and rate it, even though I didn't have the price on it yet. All right, let's look at what uh, we have for display ports. And the cheap boards will either have a D-Sub or a v one of them has a VGA. Let's sort on display port and uncover these two. All right, so you can see which ones have a display port and which ones either have a D sub DVID, and one, one of them has VGA. All right, let's see where Crossfire is supported. I don't even need to sort on this one. Which ones have the crossfire support? Um, the .5 ones have limited bandwidth crossfire support. Zero's none. Okay, SATA parts, you kind of got a wide range here. Um, some will have eight, some will have six, and there's a couple of them that only have four. Uh, you'll see at the .5 rating, so the six will be around .75. PWM fans, kind of the same deal. The ones with one have more ports, like eight fan ports or six, or you know, they'll, they'll have more than the rest. 0.75, they'll only have five or six. And the 0.5s, you know, they might have two or three or four, which you can always put in a hub, a PWM hub, hub along with RGB hub, if you need more than that. Okay, RGB. Um, it's kind of the same deal. Um, some of them have two RGB and two ARGB. Uh, some of them only have two 
RGB and one uh, ARGB, addressable RGB. Now, some of these are 5 volts that ARGB, and the 12 volt ones are the RGB ones where you got more of those ports. Um, you do not want to mix up your ARGB with RGB, otherwise, you'll burn one of the other out. Um, usually, the lights, you'll burn out the whole set of lights if you mix them up. They're not supposed to fit on each other, uh, but technically you can get a four pin on the three pin port, which will fry your lights. And onto the audio, uh, most of them have decent audio. We're gonna go ahead and sort on this one so you can see kind of a little explanation. All right. The reason these two ACES boards at the top got a 1.25, everybody says they got the best RF signal noise ratio uh, shielding on top of the board. And they got a nice little plate over the sound cord set, uh, sound uh, chipset, and the new ones. The rest of them, the new chipset, the 1200s, 1220s. So all these ones right here have the better chip sets on them with Asus having extreme good shielding, extra good shielding. The rest of them have the older uh, Realtek 800 series chip sets, so not quite as good. All right, right now everything's, uh, we're about to do the final rating. I'll stop for a second, check my video, and be right back. All right, this is like the fifth retake of the ending, um, correcting mistakes. So let's find out which ones the got the best price for value and the rating and which ones got slaughtered laying on the floor. All right. Basically, I had to correct this one right here, this Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi, had to get it had a one, changed it to minus one, and same thing on the non-Wi-Fi version down below it in red, right here, which was skewing the results and towards favoring them, which after I recorded the first inning, I did not like. So let's go on to the rating first. All right, well, there's all of our ratings um, strictly without price. So now we're going to sort all this by rating. Okay. Um, so this one was a lot higher, and so was the other one right around. Da, 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 da. Wherever it's at, Asus Tough Gaming. X570, yeah, this one was a lot higher. So now we're going to mark everything that's uh, over a 10 in black and white. The reason we're doing this is once we put in the price versus value, um, subtracting the points I gave for price rating, the 0.5 every 10 bucks over or under it shifts all over the place again <clears throat> so you can see strictly on rating any of these are the these are your best boards on my rating now let's see how they come out on price <clears throat> price versus value okay sort all this And we're changing these to the opposite way around. What make price versus value. Alright, now look what's on top. The lowest cost motherboard has the most features for the price. That's going to be, and it's a decent board too. This CPU VRM probably wouldn't put over 37, 3800X in there. Maybe a 3900X. If I'm getting a CPU that expensive, I probably won't be buying the cheapest motherboard out there. 
So if you're getting a 3600, 3700X, there is, this one is just freaking awesome. 73 bucks, 72.99. That's my budget pick. All right, uh, mid tier. Let's do that one next. Let's see what we got. Somewhere around 170. I'd probably do anything under this, under that price right there for this Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus. For me, it's a Wi-Fi Wi-Fi choice. So here, I'm going to look for anything low cost that's got Wi-Fi too. Uh, too much money and maybe I should sort it like that real quick 279 239 MSI B550 mortar 279 yeah I'm not gonna get Wi-Fi 2 in that price range lowest one I've got is the Asus Tough B550M plus Wi-Fi which somebody else said that's easy choice so I'm gonna to have to go with that because it's got Wi-Fi too and nothing else negative negative. and it is higher rated now than Asus Tough Gaming X570 plus with Wi-Fi and ten dollars cheaper it, the only thing it really lacks, well, it's got better HDMI support, uh, Wi-Fi 2. It's pretty much got everything except for the extra PCI lanes in the bottom slots and the bottom NVMe. So let's mark that one. There's mid-range or high for this. Um, what else do we got? This one is a killer board. I'm going to give it a buy. It, it doesn't have Wi-Fi. But the price, 129 This one right here. See if any of these have Wi-Fi. Here's my, uh, here it is right here okay those are my picks really Let's see if I'm gonna change these colors to black stop changing the sheet up so you guys can download the sheet and do exactly the same thing I'm doing There's my budget mid tier. I'm calling the um, Pro VDH MSI B550M Pro VDH at 132. High end on the B550M is the 179. Um, I'm going to leave the sheet right here on the price versus value rating. Of course, money no object. Um, I would probably get the Asus Tough, Asus, excuse me, Asus B550 E Strix Gaming, Money No Object, or personally, I own the Gigabyte AORS Master X570 version. That's absolutely the highest rating on here. I wouldn't buy it again. I wouldn't buy the Gigabyte B550M just strictly because of the games they play with the bottom PCI E slots and the bottom NVMe they take uh, 8x lanes from the first GPU slot and give it to the bottom two NVMe's or bottom NVMe in slots 
It's, they're playing games with it, so I wouldn't buy one of those. This one's sorted price versus value. And this one's sorted by rating. You can see where they come out. So there's my budget pick sorted by, or my high-end pick sorted by Ace Tough Gaming B550M Plus, beating the X570 Plus Wi-Fi. It's ten dollars cheaper. It has most of the features, except for the extra PCIe4 lanes and the extra CPU, uh, CPU support. But I wouldn't be putting an old CPU in it, so that doesn't concern me. But it does got the brand new version of the Wi-Fi, which the older X570 Plus does not. So this is sorted by rating, and there's my next pick. Uh, simply because this board got it because it has Wi-Fi. The 132 with Wi-Fi. Uh, it's got most of the features. It doesn't have the best VRM right here doesn't have the best HDMI but the rest of the features with Wi-Fi pretty much give it a and the price give it the mid-range and for the price 73 bucks 72.99 in this gigabyte you can't beat it for the features it's got uh, you can get Ryzen 3000 4000 support PCIe 4 on the GPU slot and the first NVMe and you still get some uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 support. This can't hardly beat it. So you can look at the bottom is where I'm shifting my sheets, different ways of looking at it. So this is price versus value. Then down here at the bottom left, I'm clicking on rating. Now you can see it by rating where we come out. And then if you want to... Um, let me clean this up. I'm making a pivot table. You can watch what I'm dragging down here at the bo bottom right. You can play around with this. Uh, this is price versus value rating. And you can kind of play around here and see with what you got. <coughs> this one's if you want if any of you use pivot tables so price versus value this is the rating uh, so check it for yourself download the sheet and you can play with it and adjust the settings find out which ones you think got slaughtered um, so I am checking out and I've got some other videos out there to watch. Please subscribe. Thank you much.